Genesis chapter 17, and we're in trouble today, but God is going to help us because we're going to say what he says to say. Genesis 17, beginning at verse 6 through 9, it shall appear on your screen. If you would, if you can, stand, and then we will all sit together and see what the Lord will say. Thank God for these minstrels that play under the anointing of God. And those who stand in the door as ushers, we thank God for you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod peace for each prince one according to their father's houses even 12 rods and the rod of it should be numbers sorry number 17 and Moses let's start again and Moses spake unto the children of Israel and everyone unto their princes gave him a rod a peace for each prince one according to their father's houses even 12 rods and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. Verse 8. And it came to pass that on the morrow, Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. And behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and bloomed blossoms and yielded almonds. And Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel, and they looked and took every man his rod. So far, the scripture text today, I want to speak to you from the subject as the Lord leads. God has made his choice. Look at the person next to you and tell him, God has made his choice. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we can't do anything without your anointing. The praise and the worship has gone forth. And so your presence is here. We thank you, God, because you inhabit praises of your people. So we feel you, God. We know you are in this room. You've come to bless, to set free. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to share your word. Not get in my mind, get in my thoughts, get in my body. Speak, and we shall listen. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone say amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God has made his choice. This is a story, sisters and brothers, about God having to show the children of Israel that he was indeed sovereign. While we are part of the British Empire and the Commonwealth, we have heard the word sovereign used to describe Queen Elizabeth. However, while she is the sovereign monarch of Great Britain and the word sovereign actually really means more than Queen Elizabeth. For sovereign comes from two Latin words together to form the idea of a supreme super ruler. That's who God is. Therefore, God's sovereignty is on a whole other level than any mere mortal man. When we say that God is sovereign, Tony. It means that there is no one that can change. There is no one that can veto. There's no one that can overrule or cancel his plan or his desires. He will have his way. Somebody ought to say, have thine own way, Lord. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, with whom he wants, and he doesn't need anyone's permission. This is a disturbing concept for man because there's something about us as humans that rebel naturally against authority. There is a part of us that feels that we need everything to be explained and everything must make sense for us to be able to move forward. Well, let me, let me correct that. There are some things that we do not understand and we do not question. Let me give you an example. For most people, 
They do not know the equation for gravity. Gravity is 9.81, the Earth's gravity, that is, is 9.81 meters per second squared. What does that mean and how does that relate to us? We do not understand it, yet we accept it, that anything that goes up must come down. We understand how that is working, whether we can explain it or not, but God's sovereignty is something that we can't really easily get over. God's sovereignty is his ability to act, to choose, to intervene wherever he chooses to. And similar to the equation for gravity, you may not understand how God moves, but you must accept it. God is in charge and what he says goes. This is hard for man because man thinks because he's been to the moon, he's in charge. Man thinks because he can take a baboon heart and put it in a human body, he's in charge. Man thinks because he has many zeros on his bank account that he is in charge. But let me pause here in this little brief introduction, Dion, to remind you that God is in charge. He calls the shots and what he says goes. The story that is before us takes place in uh, Exodus, in Numbers, sorry, 3,500 years ago. Let's unpack it and let's see if something from these ancient writings in the Bible uh, that we can glean and somehow use in 22. For those of you that did not catch the story in the reading of it, there were 12 rods that Moses uh, took from the, each tribe and wrote their name on each rod and put it in the house of the Lord and something happened when he came back. In order to understand this scripture or any scripture, theologians tell us we must first understand the text, the pretext, the context, and the post-text. Let me say that again. In order to understand any scripture, you must understand the text, the pretext, the context, and the post-text. And in, in simple English, it means before you take that verse out of context, you must read what has happened before it, you must read the context around it, and you must certainly understand what takes place after that verse to get a full understanding. We're in chapter 17, but let's look at chapter 16. We, we meet a man by the name of Korah, and he and a few of his friends, he convinces 250 leaders within the people of Israel to come up against Moses. They were part of the council of elders and they rose up against Moses. This is the pretext. And the, they approached Moses and Aaron according to the text in chapter 16 verse 11. Uh, they had the most to say about Aaron. They were dragging Aaron's name through the mud. They conspired with the sons of Reuben against Moses and Aaron, and they confronted them saying, Moses and Aaron, I don't know where y'all getting these laws from, but we don't like it. Couldn't be that those, all these laws were written on these two tablets of stone that you came down from the mountain with. We don't believe that God is just speaking to you. In fact, we think he's talking to us too. So we don't know why you should be in charge. And to, make, uh, to add insult to injury, Moses, you told us you were going to lead us out of, uh, out of, out of uh, Egypt into the promised land. And we've been looking around and walking around for days and for weeks, and we don't see a promised land in sight. We out here in this wilderness, and so we don't know if you should be in charge. The Bible says that Moses and Aaron fell on their face before God. And Moses said, I'm going to teach you and show you there's going to be a sign that God has chosen us to lead. And Moses said, if God has chosen me to lead, if God has put his hand on my life, then this ground is going to open up and swallow you. And the Bible said, as soon as the word had left from Moses' mouth, the ground opened up and Korah and all of his family and all of the people that were connected to him, the earth swallowed them up and the people could hear them screaming as they went straight down to hell. God is sovereign. 
the people scattered from one direction to the other. And the Bible says that even after that, the people were still not fully convinced. And I wondered why would they not be convinced? And the Lord spoke to me and said, this was an isolated event that everybody didn't know had happened. Because he was just dealing with the tribe of Levi. But when uh, 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 the, the, the spirit of heresy, when the spirit of division, when the spirit of confusion comes around, it does not stay in one particular group. It starts in one group and it begins to spread and metastasize throughout the entire camp. And so now God must deal with everybody together. He said to Moses, I'm sick of these people complaining. I'm sick of them wondering if I'm God and wondering if I've called you. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy everybody you back on the side and I'm gonna start all over again Moses fell on his face and said no God you can't destroy them Moses pleaded as an intercessor for the people and the Bible says then God came up with another plan Moses said you can't destroy everyone just because of a few bad apples in the group I want you to know God will never let the whole ship go down based on one or two or three or four or five people's opinion God is sovereign someone say sovereign the Bible says that the next day Moses calls them in and Moses says every leader I want every tribal leader to bring me their staff to bring me their rod and every leader had a rod that symbolized that they were the chief of that particular tribe and so Reuben tribe came with their rod and Levi's tribe and Dan's tribe and Asher's tribe and Zebulun and all of them came with their rods and the Bible says that they put the rods in the temple and when they put the rods in the temple something happened at that time and that's what I want to talk about today. Not so much Korah and what happened before, but what happened with the rods. I want to just point out a few things and bring them to your attention. And I believe that they will help you today. The Bible says, and Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of them gave a rod apiece. One for each prince according to their father's houses. Thank you so much. One for each prince according to their father's houses, even 12 rods. And Aaron, the rod of Aaron, was among their rods. Point number one, everyone was represented in the plan. There was no tribe that God had overlooked. And I want you to know God is a fair God. Whenever he is making his choices, everyone has the opportunity before God. There was no tribe that was put out. There was no tribe that was left out. God included everyone. So point number one is you are included in in God's plan. If you're grateful just to be in the plan of God, you ought to clap your hands and give him some kind of praise. The second thing I want to point out was the Bible says in verse number seven that Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. Can I tell you the good news today is the person that is making the final decision of the choice is never a committee. It's never a group. It is the Lord. Moses laid the rods up before the Lord. Now, how does this help me? Can I tell you your case and your situation and your circumstance and your family and your future is all laid before God? What makes this situation so wonderful is that it was all laid out before the Lord. Have you ever had to lay something before the Lord? Have you ever had to put something in the presence of the Lord to get a decision? Have you ever wondered which choice to make and to lay it before? Let me make it a little clearer. Have you ever had to lay your children before the Lord? Have you ever had to lay your own physical body before the Lord? Whatever it is that's going on in your life, let me encourage you to follow follow Moses' lead. Whatever it is, you got to lay it out before the Lord. Present it to God because God is the one that has the final say. In your life, there's not a man that has the final say. There's not a judge that has the final say. But Jehovah still has the final say. Any situation that you face, anything that's going on in your life, put it before the Lord. That's why songwriter wrote I found the answer I've learned to pray with faith to guide me 
I've found the way. The sun is shining for me each day. I've found the answer. I learned to pray. Look at your neighbor and tell him, put it before the Lord. Don't put it before your neighbor. Don't put it before your friends. There's some pastors. You can't even put it before them. Whatever is ailing you, whatever is on your heart, put it before the Lord. Now verse number three, and I'm almost done. Verse number eight says, and it came to pass, I want you to see this, that on the morrow, Moses went back into the tabernacle. In other words, on the next day, he goes back in to see what's going to happen to these rods. Can I tell you your situation is about to shift in the next 24 hours? Y'all don't believe that. If you would, you'd be shouting a little bit more than that. The Bible says they went in one way and in 24 hours, God had done something. I came to announce to someone prophetically that there's a 24-hour shift that's getting ready to take place in your life. If you can grab it, if you can hold on to it, if you can say that word is for me, I am here to tell you I'm under a heavy anointing today. That's why the devil is fighting my body. You have no idea how I feel. But I tell you, I don't care what's going on in this body. I'm going to preach it till my nose bleed today. I'm here to tell you, God said, give him 24 hours and watch him turn whatever it is that's in your heart right now around. Can somebody give God some kind of praise for 24 hours? I hear the Holy Ghost saying, watch me. Watch me fix it in 24 hours. Watch me turn that thing around in 24 hours. Watch me make my decision clear in 24 hours. Somebody high five your neighbor and tell him 24 hours, baby. Just hold on for 24 24 more hours I heard the spirit say the Bible said that Moses I feel the preacher coming now because I feel five or six of y'all want to pray hallelujah to Jesus I'm gonna rise up right over this banner drill just give me a second to get myself together because God said to tell you today in 24 hours he's shifting it and turning it around and the Bible declares that after 24 hours Moses went back into the temple uh, and he examined the rod. Uh, rod number one looked the same. Uh, two, three, and four looked the same. Uh, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine looked the same. Uh, Ten and eleven looked the same. Uh, but there was one rod uh, that had something different. Uh, the Bible said that uh, over the 24 hours uh, that this rod had bud, uh, it had blossomed flowers, uh, and it even gave fruit. Uh, I came to tell somebody today uh, under the sound of my voice uh, that what God is about to do in the next 24 hours uh, he's getting ready to pay you in such a way uh, he's getting ready to bless you in such a way uh, it's not enough for it to just be buds uh, or blossoms uh, or fruit uh, in other words God's gonna get ready uh, to give you your back pay who am I talking to uh, God is releasing uh, all of the overtime pay uh, God is getting ready to release uh, every entitlement uh, and God is going to throw something extra uh, he may just give you the car too uh, I hear the Holy Ghost say uh, this blessing is going to be so secure uh, it's coming in a triple uh, it's coming in a wave uh, so that you knew no man could do it uh, it wasn't just enough to allow it to burn uh, but God allowed flowers to come uh, and God allowed almonds to come uh, in other words God did overnight uh, what it would have take a whole year to do uh, it takes a year uh, for something dead to come to life uh, the rod went in dead uh, but it came back out alive the rod went in stiff but it came back out bearing flowers the rod went in smelling one way and came out fragrant the war ward with the rod went in fruitless but it came out producing almonds I came to tell you God is accelerating what he's about to do in your life in the next 24 hours I hear God saying just gird up yourself and get ready it doesn't matter who don't believe in you it doesn't matter who been talking about you they've been talking about Aaron like a dog but God was getting ready to show them I got the power to bring a man up and I got the power to bring a man down I have made my choice and when they looked at the rod the rod that was budding was Aaron's rod 
cannot tell you over a 24 hour period you got to go through some darkness i came to tell you in the dark seasons of your life when you feel like all hell is breaking loose and nothing is going on for you god is going to bless you in the night time why did god do it in the night if god had done it in the daytime they would say blame it on the sun they would have given the sun credit they would said photosynthesis caused the leaves to grow if it was in the daytime they would have said the rain was falling and that's what made it grow but god puts you in the dark i want to talk to somebody you've been in a dark season for the last three and a half months God said, I didn't put you in the cupboard to kill you, but I put you in the cupboard to bring forth a blossom, to birth a blessing in you, to take your ministry to the next level, to take your faith to the next level. Sisters and brothers, God has made a choice. And if you understand anything about choosing, the Bible says, I might as well go to my turning point in Revelation chapter number one. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 they're gonna put it on the screen and I want to turn this dangerous curve and I'm gonna take my seat I'm talking from the subject that God has made his choice Revelation chapter number 1 verse 6 says and have made us we're talking about Jesus he has made us kings and priests unto God and his father listen to this God has made his choice and the Bible says he has made us priests and kings in other words in the Old Testament Aaron was the choice but in the New Testament you are the choice I wish you put your hand on your chest and say God has chosen me the reason why you don't praise him like you should is because you still can't believe God chose you because if you understood who all could have been chosen who all was trying to be chosen and the fact that God chose you with your no good self with your lying self with your no tithes paying self with your low down self but God looked beyond your fault and he saw your need put your hand on your chest and tell the Lord thank you thank you for choosing me because some folks thought when I started this sermon I was going to preach a sermon but how the Lord chose me but that's not what this is about the Bible says in Revelation that Jesus has chosen all of us to be kings and priests now if you are a king or a queen or a priest you should be standing on your feet because this is the time to to serve how do I serve him in the temple I lift my hands and bless him how do I serve him in the temple I bow before his presence for he has chosen me qualify it pastor Trent John chapter 15 verse 16 I want them to put it on the screen John John 15 and 16 says ye have not chosen me but I I have chosen you John 15 16 come on put it on the screen ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you put your hand on your chest and say I'm chosen you may not choose me you may not want me but God has chosen me you don't need that this week when they roll their eyes at you you don't need that this week when you feel like I don't have the victory God has chosen somebody shout me I'm finished I'm finished quick sermon up and down everyone standing Moses put the rods in there because he knew he didn't know how God was going to do it but he knew that in 24 hours everybody will be able to see who God's choice was I want you to know today you are the choice your hands should be up lifted God chose you to carry the gospel God chose you to win this next generation God chose you to stand in the gap and my question to you is are you choosing him like he's choosing you? 
The other day I was watching The Price is Right. Everybody was there. And they say, Sandy Smith, come on down. You think Sandy Smith say, I know they're calling me. And maybe that ain't me. You know what Sandy Smith do? She run. Benjamin Jones, come on down. We are the only folk that God is calling us. We wondering, it's me, it's this looking back and you ain't sure you're scared. There's someone that needs to receive the Lord as their savior today. Keep me right on the air. I stopped in time because I need this to go over the airwaves. I need somebody watching today. In the Old Testament, God chose Aaron to be the priest. But in Revelation, Jesus chose you. Someone here today doesn't know the Lord as their savior. Come quickly, come quickly. He has chosen you. Now you got to choose him. You got to choose him. Because guess what happens? When he chooses you, and you play the fool, it goes down to the next name. And that opportunity is missed and is not guaranteed to come again. I came today because there are three of you that need to surrender your life back to God. I want you to come quickly. Come on, come on, come on. I want you to choose him. I don't want you to choose him in your seat. I want you to run on down like you at the prices right. Come on, there's somebody here. Come on, there's somebody here that needs to just accept him. Or you need to come back to him. You were saved at one particular point before. It's not enough to come to church. God has made his choice. And he said, I want you question is do you want me perhaps you're here and you say pastor Trent I want to join this church I've been following for a long time but I'm not officially a member this is the day we're going to close the summer out hard with you is there anybody that want to join the church today come forward come be a part God is choosing you to be a minister in here to be a part of this ministry if you're here and you're not a member come on we want to have you to be a part of this church. Hallelujah to Jesus. Finally, my last prayer. One was for salvation. Second one was for membership. Now I want to pray for someone who says, Pastor Trent, I've been running from the Lord because I know he has something for me to do. Imagine what it was like for Aaron when that rod came out with his name on it. If you know that God is asking more from you, not just more time, he's asking more money from your tithes, he's asking for more of your attention, more of your prayer life, more of your giving of yourself. If you say today, Pastor Trent, I want to give more, I want you to come. I want to give more of me. There's some more of me I got to give. He chose you. He chose you. If you're not satisfied with as much as you're giving him, come. He wants more. But I promise you, with that more comes so much blessing. There's about six more of you that need to give him more. Come. Come on. You know you're not giving him all you can give him. God says, challenge you today. I'm choosing you. I believe you can give me more. And if you come and give me more, the blessing will be yours. The Bible says, when Moses accept, when Aaron accepted the challenge to be high priest, everything that came to the temple that was not consumed blessed his family. When you come to God as a priest, God blesses you over and abundantly. All to thee. Lift your hands. My blessed Savior. I surrender all. God has chosen you. Let me tell you how difficult this word was to get to you today. 
Yesterday I was home doing my final preparation. Power went off. I sat there for an hour waiting for it to come back on. So then I had to make a decision. I drove to the church. Got here. Couldn't find my keys. Finally got inside. My mom called and said the power's back on at home. So the enemy said, well, go back home. I said, no, I'm already here. When I left the church, I had to make three stops, including one to the pharmacy to help somebody else out. Woke up this morning feeling as horrible as horrible can be, but God knew what you need. He said, give them the short version. They're going to get it. Here's the point. God has already made a choice. And guess what? When God chooses it, nobody can change it. Nobody can shift it. You're the one. Put your hand on yourself. Say, it's me. That's why you've been feeling. There's two more of you. I, the Lord Holy Spirit helped me up for the prayer. Two more of you come. You got to give him more. There are two more of you. You know it's you. Come on, don't hold the whole service up. That's one. Thank you, sir. I got to give him more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is going to bless your life. This ain't going to hold you back. God is getting something to you. Somebody say 24 hours. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you did it overnight. And you did it in such a profound way. Everybody backed off Aaron and knew he was God's chosen. Thank you, God, that these people here, somebody going to back off them in the next 24 hours. Because when they see them, they will know that they've been chosen. Bless this congregation. Bless this service. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone say amen. Come on, you're chosen. You are chosen. Ye are chosen generation. A royal priesthood. You may return to your seats. And as you sit and get your seed ready for your offering today, a prophetess is coming to help us. Come prophetess, she's going to receive this offering today. I want to tell you, once you obey the call of God, hear it from the bishop, the pastor. People will know when God has shifted some things in your life. In the last week and a half, listen to this, people that never spoke to me before, people that never thought there was any God in me, I didn't run into them and they happened to see me to say congratulations. 